in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Do come in. Make yourself comfortable because I'm going to tell you a nice, quiet little ghost story. Nothing to frighten you. Not badly, at any rate. Nothing to make you run screaming into the street. No, the most this ghost story can do is make you snuggle down deeper under the covers and reach out for a hand to hold. A hand I trust that is firm and warm, not clammy and cold. Our mystery drama, The Phantom Lullaby, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Rosemary Murphy and Arnold Moss. I myself have never met a ghost. I don't know why. Perhaps something in my personality puts them off. But if ever I should, I hope he'll do something more than moan and sigh and clank chains. What I should really enjoy would be a nice chatty ghost who'd sit down and talk things over. Things like whether the life after death is really pleasanter than the one before. And if it is, why is it? Things like that. Things that only a ghost would know. Ah, well. Perhaps one fine day or some dark night, if I hold myself in readiness, my ghost will visit me. Meantime, relax, won't you? And listen. Hello? Intercoastal Airlines? Well, can you tell me a flight 509 from New York is on time? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hold on. Ellen's room is finished. Good. I've ordered new curtains. Oh, I hope she likes her room. Oh, I'm sure she will. I'm sure she... Uh, yes? Oh, it is. Well, good, good. Thank you very much. The plane's on time. Well, you better get started then. Yeah, yeah. Don't be nervous. I, I, I'm not nervous. It'll only make her nervous if you're nervous. What are you looking in the closet for? Uh, my, my overcoat. It's on the chair. Oh. She's only been away four days. It's not a question of how long she's been away. It's what, what she went away for. I know that. Well, then why say a foolish thing like only four days? Please, please. I'm nervous, too. Well, what do you think you're doing now? This couch shouldn't be here. It should be over there. That's an eight-foot couch. Don't try to move it by yourself. I can do it. Let me have the superintendent, please. E Emily, will you stop that? I'd help you, but I have to get going. I don't want Ellen standing around the airport. Uh, hello? Uh, this is Mr. Keene, Penthouse B. Yeah, we just moved in. We're not quite settled in yet, and... I have to go to the airport to pick up my daughter. Could could you possibly help my wife move a few pieces of furniture? Now, we want the place to look extra nice. Our, our daughter's never seen it. And... Oh, well, that's great. That, that's just great. Thank you. Thank you very much. He'll be up in a couple of minutes. Howard, do you think Ellen will like this apartment? Well, I, I certainly hope so. It's costing an arm and a leg. What with the terrace and everything? Her own bathroom, a real dining room? Well, the idea is to give her a change. New surroundings, blot out everything that happened. <sighs> As if a terrace and her own bathroom could take her mind off that terrible man. Well, they'll help. I'm not saying completely, but they'll help. Give her something to think about besides John Draper and... And the rest of it. Seems strange we never even met him. Well, I hope I never do meet him. Well, honey, I gotta get going. Don't tell Ellen about this place. Let it be a surprise. And Howard, be very, you know, gentle with her. Let her know we love her. Yeah, I'll let her know. Well, I'm off. Oh, oh. Uh, you're the superintendent. Uh, yeah. I didn't hear you knock. I was just getting ready to. Well, come in. This this is my wife. She'll show you what she wants done. Oh, and uh, here's something for your trouble. Oh, uh, okay. Honey, I'll be back in an hour. Good luck. Take care. 
Well, now... You like this place? Well, I'm sure we will like it. We just moved in. Mm, I know. It's a nice-looking apartment with the terrace and all. First thing I want to do is move the couch over, over there to the long wall. Everybody likes this place when they first move in. If you take one end and I take the other... One, two, three months, then they start getting jumpy. Jumpy? Mm. They pay up what they owe on the lease and they move out. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, it happens every time. Well, let's move this thing if we're going to... Let, let me move the coffee table first. Oh, I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, how'd you happen to hear it was vacant? Well, actually, friends of ours called us. They, they'd met some people at a party who said they were giving up this beautiful apartment, and we thought... That would be the Winthrops. Yeah, they lasted six months. Uh, where do you want this table? <laughs> right where you're standing. Okay. And before them was the Katzes, and before them the Millbrooks, and before them the Kramers, and before well, them... Why did they all move out? I, what's wrong with the place? Search me. They would never say, any of them. Just paid up and moved out. You know what I think? What? I think the joint's haunted. Now, where does the couch go? Enter, young lady. Ellen. Darling, it's so good to have you back. I'll put the suitcase in the bedroom. When you see your bedroom, darling, make allowances for the curtains. I had to put up your old ones, and they're too short, but I'm expecting new ones, maybe today. But I got you a new bed. Oh, heavens, the fuss they made about delivering it. So, what do you think? Do you like the apartment? It's very nice. Come, look at the view from the terrace. Come on! You can see for miles. Isn't that spectacular? Spectacular. Well, you can take a good look at it later. What would you like to do now? I don't know. Take a hot bath? You have your own bathroom now. Really? Do I? Or would you like to just sit and talk? All right. If you want to. Ellen, was the operation very bad? You mean the abortion? No. It wasn't that at all. I'm glad of that. I opened your suitcase, uh, let a little air in, huh? I, I, I didn't unpack anything, though. I'll do it. You want to do that now, dear? Maybe take that hot bath and I'll start lunch and then when it's ready, I'll call you. All right. Is the door on the right? Oh, here, I'll show you. I'll find it. And the bathroom opens right off of it. Howard, what's wrong with her? I don't know. She was... She was like that all the way in from the airport. Like a sleepwalker. Like a zombie. Howard? I, I'm making us a drink. We need it. How is she? I guess she's all right. Here's your drink. She's lying on the bed, just staring at the ceiling. I spoke to her, but she didn't answer me. So I, I didn't bother her. That horrible man, he did this to her. I wish she'd talk to me about him. But she never did say much, except that she was seeing him a lot. And then when she told me she was pregnant, she said he didn't want to marry her, so she guessed she'd have an abortion. Just like that. Things have changed, though. The young people nowadays... And the parents nowadays. I guess so. I, I, I should have insisted. I should have put my foot down absolutely insisted. Insisted on what? Well, at least on meeting the guy. At least that. That's not the way things are done these days. Well, they should be. Look, do you think I ought to get in touch with him now? Now? It's too late well, we now. we can't just leave her the way she is, walking around like an automaton. Maybe he could... Oh, I don't know. Maybe he could snap her out of it or something. Maybe she'll snap out of it by herself. If she was really in love with him... She said she wasn't. Well, maybe she was. Maybe she was and didn't know it. Anyway, I think he ought to see what he's done. What good would that do? I don't know. I don't know. Why don't you go and see if she's all right? I don't like to disturb her. Well, just knock on the door and see if she answers. All right. Well, the state she's in... 
Ellen? Oui, maman. I don't want to disturb you, dear, but I just want to make sure everything's all right. Tout va bien. I guess she's all right. Anyway, she answered me. But what did she say? I couldn't make it out, but she sounded fine. Well, that's good. Maybe it was just shock or something before. Probably that was it. Emily, if you get to talking to her, if she'll talk to you... Oh, she will. A- ask her about this man. Hmm? What, what, what's his name again? John Draper. Yeah, a- ask her how she feels about him. You know, if, if, if she thinks about him, wants, wants to call him up or anything, you tell her that it's all right with us. Oh, but she doesn't care if it's all right with us. Young people don't these days. They just go ahead and do what they want to do. Well, do you realize we don't know anything about this man? What, 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 what does he do for a living, if, if anything? He plays the piano. I think he gives lessons. Where does he live? Over on Market Street, I think. Yeah, that figures. Has he got a phone? I imagine so. I don't know. Well, if he gives lessons, he's got to have a phone. He's got to be in the book. Well, I think so. Anyway, oh, here he is. Look. John Draper, 121 Market. You're not going to call him. No, I'm not going to call him. I just want to know that he's alive and breathing somewhere in this town. If Ellen isn't better by tomorrow or the next day... How would she will be? Go knock on the door again, will you? What'll I say? Say anything. Say we're having a drink out here. Why doesn't she join us? All right, if you say so. But, but keep it light and, you know, you know, cheerful. Uh, Ellen, dear, uh, your father and I are having a drink. Don't you want to join us? Oh, not now. How's that, dear? It's we don't you Well, whenever you're ready, we'd love to have you. I think a drink would do you good. Whenever you're ready. I guess she's all right. What did she say she was all right? I don't know what she said. What do you mean you don't know what she said? Ellen! Are you all right, baby? Je regrette, mais je ne peux pas vous joindre pour le moment. Je dois m'occuper de les garçons. Excusez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Howard. Why, uh, I didn't know she could speak French. She can't. Well, she just did. I understand enough French to know that. What did she say? Uh, could you tell? Well, she said she... She couldn't join us just now because... Because she had to take care of... The little boy. Do you agree with Anthony Trollope that the chief duty a parent owes a child is to make the child happy? I think I do. And I think in their more beneficent moods, most people do. Why, then, are there so many bitterly unhappy children? Ellen Keene, only daughter of Howard and Emily Keene, came home a little while ago after the removal of an incipient life from her body. In the new penthouse apartment her parents have rented in an anxious effort to lift her spirits, she has just now delivered her longest utterance since she arrived. Je regrette, mais je ne peux pas vous joindre pour le moment. Je dois m'occuper du petit garçon. Excusez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Howard? Why, I didn't know she could speak French. She can't. Well, she just did. I understand enough French to know that. What did she say? Uh, could you tell? Well, she said she couldn't join us just now because... Well, because she had to take care of the little boy. What little boy? Well, how should I know what little boy? How had the operations affected her mind? She... No, no, don't, don't, don't say that. That's not true. It must have meant more to her than we knew. How could we know she acted as though it was, as though it was nothing? That's how young people are these days. I'm going to call that man. John Draper? What, 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 what good would that do? He ought to know what he's done. Howard, it isn't right to blame it all on him. I don't care. There, here. Here's his number. 
I don't see why you think he can help. Well, maybe she still loves him. Maybe he can get through to her. Maybe. Hello? Mr. Draper? John Draper? Yes? I'm Howard Keene, Ellen Keene's father. Yes? Ellen came home a little while ago. I thought you might like to know. How is she? Is she all right? No, she's not all right. What's the trouble? She... They didn't hurt her, did they? Physically, she seems to be all right, but... Other ways, she's not. I'm glad you called me. What can I do? My wife and I thought it might help if you came to see her. Why, of course, right now. If you can. I'll have to cancel some lessons, but I'll be there as soon as I can. Oh, uh, hold on just a minute. We, we've moved to a new place. Oh? You've moved? Yes, we, we took a penthouse on the square of the moment, just moved in this morning. It's at 42 Seated Terrace. Uh, do you know where that is? Yes, pen- penthouse B. Have you got that? Hello? Mr. Draper, are you there? Hello? I'm sorry, Mr. Keene, but I'm afraid I won't be able to get there after all. Give Ellen my love. Hello? Mr. Draper? Hello? Howard? I don't get it. He was very nice, very concerned about Ellen. He wanted to help. He wanted to come to see her right away. And then... Then all of a sudden, when I gave him the address, he made a sudden switch and... He said he was sorry. He couldn't. Why would he do that? Thought it over, I guess. Decided he wanted no part of it. But you said he sounded nice at first. He's not going to get away with it. How? what are you going to do? What was his address again? It's right there in, in, in the phone book. I'm going to get him to see Ellen if I have to drag him here. Uh, what, what, what's the address? 121 Market Street. Howard, I wish you wouldn't go. I'll be back in half an hour. You stay right here. You think I should call Dr. Stone? No, no, not yet. Well, what could we say to him? That our daughter talks to us in French when she doesn't know any French? That she says she has to take care of a little boy when there isn't any little boy? No, you, 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 you just stay here with her. And I, I don't think she'll get violent or anything like that and... I'll be back in half an hour with Mr. John Draper. Oh, dear. Ellen? Ellen, honey? Ellen, don't you want to come out now and have some lunch? I could fix us both a sandwich and some soup. The sweet of you pay. We haven't had a chance to talk. The door, Mama. You sure you're all right? Not here, Mama. Uh, that, that's the phone buzzer from downstairs, dear. I, I have to answer it. Yes? Uh, this is Super, Mrs. Keene. I got a big package down here for you. Package? What kind of package? Well, it's big. It's from, uh, uh, Standish Decorators. Oh, oh. It must be the curtains from my daughter's room. You want me to bring it up? Uh, yes. Would you please? Yeah, I'll be right up. Thank you. Ellen, darling. Ellen, the curtains for your room have come. You remember I told you I ordered new ones? What do you think? Shall we take down the old ones and put put up the new ones? I'm dying to see how they look. Ellen, dear. Ellen? Ellen? Ellen, answer me. The door, Mama. She's sweet as you be. <sighs> Dear God. I don't know what to do. I, I, I don't... Yes, I'm coming. I, I'm coming. Just a minute. Here's your package, Mrs. Keene. Thank you. Thank you. You, uh, okay, Mrs. Keene? What? Well, you look kind of peculiar. I do. What's the matter? Ghosts been bothering you? Ghosts? I told you the place was haunted. Yes, you did, didn't you? Didn't think they'd be getting to you so soon, though. Look, uh, come in for a minute, will you? Do you mind? I'd like to talk to you. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, Tell 
me why you say this apartment is haunted. It was just a guess. You don't really know, do you? No, I don't really know about this apartment, no. But I know quite a lot about ghosts from personal experience. Tell me what you know. Well, I guess everybody knows that ghosts are no more and no less than the spirits of the dead who won't leave the earth, right? I mean, that's pretty obvious, wouldn't you say? I, I wouldn't know anything about it. Oh, well, I, I thought everybody knew that. Well, that's what they are. The only difference between one ghost and another being why they won't leave the earth. Why they keep coming back to haunt. And there's various reasons why. Like what? Well, they could be they're in love with some live person who returns that love even after death. That's one reason. What other reasons are there? Well, there's a ghost that won't admit to death, a ghost who resents the people who've gone on living. Now, this, generally speaking, is the ghost of some person who is used to lording it over everybody in life and comes back to try to lord it over them some more. That's another reason for ghosts. What other reasons? Then there's the kind that just can't understand how it happened. How what happened? Death. Their own death. That's the kind of ghost I understand very well. My sister's one of those. You mean your sister doesn't understand how she happened to die? Is that what you mean? She was... 12 years old. She was on her way to school. And a car came along with a drunken driver behind the wheel and the car swerved up on the sidewalk and killed her. She never knew what happened. Before she knew anything, she was dead. And her... her ghost comes back? Every night. Every night I wake up and hear crying. What do you do? I, I try to explain it to her, but what can I say? It doesn't make any sense. A drunk in a car and her on her way to school? No, it, it doesn't make any sense. It makes more sense to kill yourself, don't you think? That way you got something to say about how you go and, and when. Not just leave it up to some drunk in a car. Well, that's my opinion anyway. All right, I... I'll be getting back downstairs. Couldn't you, um, just stay for a little while? I I don't feel like being alone right now. My husband will be home in, oh, about half an hour. He went to see somebody over on Market Street. I... No, I, I can stay a little while if you like me to. I'd appreciate it. We'll talk about ghosts, huh? That's my favorite topic. Ghosts. <laughs> for Mr. Draper. I'm Mr. Draper. I, I guess it's your son I'm looking for. I don't have a son. Oh, well, I, I, I expect it. Well, I didn't know I... I'm Howard Keene, Ellen's father. I'd like to come in and talk to you. Mr. Keene... Please, it's very important or I wouldn't ask. Come in. Sit down if you want. Excuse my staring at you. I, I, I expected a much younger man. I'm 51. That's just my age. You said on the phone Ellen is all right. No, I said that physically Ellen's all right. Why didn't you want to marry Ellen when you found out that she was pregnant? I couldn't. Well, you've got a wife. I had a wife. You're divorced. Something I never talk about, Mr. Keene. You never talked about it to Ellen? I never talked about it to anybody. And I don't intend to. Maybe you should. I can't. Tell me about Ellen. Well, she came home a little while ago. She, she, she was changed. She talked in monosyllables, short sentences at the most. And we thought after what she's been through, maybe, maybe that's only natural. So my wife told her to have a bath, take a nap, and we'd have a drink, lunch. Well, well, my 
wife and I were talking, Ellen came out of a room and spoke to us quite a long speech. And every word of it in French. In French? Now, Ellen doesn't know any French. Well, you never spoke to her in French, did you? Never. Never. Well, I, never. I, 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 I just wonder. What, what did she say in French? Well, she said that... She said she was sorry she couldn't join us for a drink, but she had to take care of a little boy. What little boy? I, I have no idea. Mr. Keene, after an operation like the one Ellen had, don't you think it's possible that... Well, that it's bound to have an effect on a woman, on her emotions, for a while anyway? I don't want it to go on for too long, and that's why I called you. You thought I could help? I hoped you could. Get your coat. I've got a cab waiting outside. Now I've told you everything I know about ghosts, Mrs. Keene. Have you seen the one that's haunting this place? No. I'm not even sure there is one. Well, I'll be getting on downstairs if you don't need me for anything. Oh, well, if you could, I'd, I'd really appreciate your helping me put these curtains up. If you have the time. Oh, yeah, I've got a few minutes. They're for my daughter's room. I'm not sure we should go in there. She's been resting. I'll tell you what, I'll knock on her door. If she's up, I'd, I know she'd love to see the curtains. Ellen, dear, it's Mother. The superintendent is here, and if it's all right with you, we'd like to put up the new curtains. You know, I told you before, they just came from the shop. Ellen, dear, I'm going to open the door and come in, because I I think you've been by yourself long enough. I, I really do. Ellen? I... Oh! What's the matter? Oh! Okay, what? Good Lord. She's not moving. She's not breathing. Her eyes are wide open. She's dead. She's not dead. Don't say such a thing. Don't you dare say such a thing. Uh, Mrs. Keene, what are you doing? Calling the doctor, you fool. Doctor it won't do any good. She's dead. Man is the only animal who knows that he will die. So said the great Voltaire. The knowledge that he will one day cease to live permeates man's days and poisons them a little. I think that if ever I am given another life, I should like to live it as a bird or a monkey or a chipmunk or a beetle. It doesn't add much to the enjoyment of life to know that it won't last long. You remember I promised you a quiet little ghost story? I think I've kept my promise so far. Though, of course, in any story, there must be an explosion or two. At this moment, Mr. Keene, Ellen's father, is preparing to enter a taxi cab with Mr. Draper, Ellen's one-time lover. Is that married? Yes. But you weren't divorced? No. Your wife died? Yes. I see. How long ago was that? What? How long ago did your wife die? Twenty-five years ago. Do you and your wife have any children? Yes. One. Where is the child? Dead. At birth? No. I... I feel a little bit like a heel asking you all these questions, but I'm concerned about my daughter. I'm concerned, too, or I wouldn't have come with you. I understand. I, I think I understand. You've never wanted to get married again, is that it? Never. Even after all these years? I met my wife in Europe towards the end of the war. The big war. I'd been doing very well in business. I was on my way to making it big when I got drafted. I didn't like being drafted, but I went anyway, and she... She was the one bright spot in an otherwise drab and miserable army career. I brought her back here. She had a child, and they both died. I stopped making money. I started playing the piano, and I have been at it ever since then. But you were in love with Ellen. I 
hope you don't mind my asking. I don't know what that means, to be in love. I'm not saying there's no such thing, but if there is, I've forgotten or I, I never knew what it's like. I'm very sorry for you. It's very kind of you, but don't bother. Uh, see the terrace is the next right turn, driver. Are we nearly there? Next right, about half a mile. My wife and I just moved in. We wanted to do something to Ellen. We heard through friends about this marvelous apartment that was suddenly available. A, a penthouse, of all things. Penthouse B, you said. Yeah, we, we took it on an impulse, thinking it'd be something for Ellen to come home to, to take her mind off everything. You know, what she'd been through. And did it? Well, no. No, she's hardly said a word about the place since I brought her home from the airport. She's hardly said anything about anything. Just a few words of French and that one thing about not being able to have a drink with us before lunch because she had to look after a little boy. How could she speak French when she doesn't know any French? And what little boy did she have to look after? I don't understand any of it. Not any of it. Hold on, hold on. We're almost there. Maybe, maybe Ellen will be all right more, more of herself anyway, and then you can ask her. You just hang in there for a couple of minutes more. Dr. Stone, what's wrong with Ellen? Well, this is Keen. I can't detect any vital signs at all. I hesitate to pronounce her dead, but what can I say? I can find no pulse, no heartbeat, no reflexes. I've done everything I can think of. Injection, massage. She's not dead. Tell me she's not dead. Like you, I refuse to conclude that at the moment. But if your daughter is alive, Mrs. Keene, she is in the deepest coma I've ever encountered. It's as though she were not in or out of this world at all. It's a tall building on the corner, driver, number 42. A very tall building. How's that? I said it's a tall building. Well, compared to the way they build them nowadays, it's not so tall, but I guess when they put it up, it was considered pretty daring. Hey, hey, what do you think you're doing? I can't, I just can't. You get back in there. Driver, driver, stop the cab. Hey, stop. I you can't go up there, I can't. I don't care if you can or can't, you're going to. Now, march. Don't you try anything now. I got hold of you. I can't do it. You let me pay the cab. Here you are, driver. Now you get going. Mr. Keene, I... I know you think this is very strange. You bet I think it's very strange. I can explain. After you've seen my daughter, you can explain. Now you get in the elevator there. Right now, Ellen's the only one I'm interested in. Push that button that says penthouse. Penthouse B. That's right. Mrs. Keene, if Ellen isn't dead, and I'm still not convinced, then she's either in a very, very deep coma or... Eh, here I'm getting into territory that I don't understand at all. She's in a trance. A trance? We hear of these things, people who can control their body functions... I was told of a man who could make one half of his arm stone cold and the other half blood warm. He could do it at will, or so I was told. I can't believe it. Do you believe it? Mrs. Keene, there isn't a doctor alive today who would deny the power the human mind has over the human body. But... Oh, that must be my husband. Well, I want to talk to him. I'll only be a second. Yes, I'm coming. Howard. Mr. Draper? That's him. I'm Ellen's mother. Howard, I called Dr. Stone. He's with Ellen now. He he wants to talk to you. I'm in here, Mrs. Keene. Dr. Stone, how is she? She shows no vital signs of life at all. You don't mean that she's dead. Oh, no, she can't be dead. Emily, what happened? Mr. Keene... Uh, we don't know precisely what happened, and I don't... 
Well, for some reason I can't really explain, I don't think she's dead. Either she's in a deep coma or she's in a trance state. Well, what's that, a trance state? It's something medical men know very little about. So I want your permission to take her to the hospital, have her examined by another doctor there, and if he gives us no convincing diagnosis, we'll call in a psychic healer. You have our permission to do anything you have to. Of course. All right, I'll call an ambulance. Mr. Draper, I've been very rude. We've, we've paid no attention to you at all. Thank you so much for coming. It's quite all right. You can see we're, we're beside ourselves with worry. Yes, I, I can yeah, see that. There's an ambulance service. There's Dr. Stone. Mrs. Calling. Keene, do you suppose that I Senator, could see Ellen? Oh, I, I don't see. think so. Not now. Why didn't somebody wake me up? Ellen. Thank you. Darling. Is it time for lunch? Ellen. Well, how do you feel? Dr. Stone. What, what are you doing here? I, and John. You know, it's funny. I, I, I thought I heard your voice, but then I decided I must have imagined it. Yeah, but how do you feel, Ellen? Well, I, I, I feel perfectly fine. I, I had a wonderful sleep. You're sure you feel all right? Well, I just told you I feel fine. I was tired when Daddy brought me home from the airport, but I, uh, I, I had a lovely nap, and, and now I'm fine. But what are you doing here? And John, how did you get here? How did you know where to come? Your father, he told me. Oh, really? Well, that was nice. Then you've met. Yes, we've, uh, we've met. You'll stay for lunch, won't you, John? Uh, Mother, is that all right? Is there enough for John, too? Yes, dear, there's enough. But first, don't you think you ought to bathe and change your clothes? I, I guess I should. I, I was going to do that before, wasn't I? When I first got here. But then I got busy with something or other and I forgot all about it. You want me to come with you, dear? Well, it would be nice. We haven't had a chance to talk, have we? No, but we will. See you off your lunch. Yes, Ellen. You'll stay, Mr. Draper? I, I'm not sure that I can. Please do. Ellen seems to want you to. Uh, Mr. Keene, I don't know any of the whys or wherefores, but your daughter seems to be all right. Yes, she seems to be. All right. I'm going back to my office. I'll be there all afternoon. If anything happens to alarm you, please call me. I can be here in five minutes. Thank you, Dr. Stone. No, 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 don't bother to come to the door. I'll let myself out. Oh, I'm glad she's all right. I suppose you don't believe there was ever anything wrong. I don't know. After all, you didn't see her when she was... Well, the way she was. I know your daughter very well, Mr. Keene. I know what a sensitive girl she is. I told you in the taxi that... I didn't believe I knew the meaning of being in love. Now I'm not so sure. I think I was, in my own neurotic way, in love with Ellen. We were very close. Well, why did you make such a fuss about coming here? Why did you try to jump out of the cab? What, what, what was that all about? I had been here before. When? When were you ever here? I used to live here. In this apartment? At House B, yes. But when was this? Twenty-five years ago. You lived here with your wife, huh? And your child. Yes. And your child was a little boy. Yes. How old was the child when he died? Two years old. And your wife, how old was she? Twenty-one. They both died while you were living here. I can see why you wouldn't want to come with me. It's, it's not, it's not just that they died. Well, what was it? It, it was the way they died. Tell me about it. <sighs> when I came back from Europe, see, I started up in business again. The business which the war had so rudely interrupted I was determined to work my way up the ladder again, and I, I threw myself into my work. 
I think my wife felt neglected. Truth, truth is, I did neglect her. But it wasn't just my neglect. She, she was a foreigner. Even after three years, she hadn't learned to speak English. She was shy. She didn't make friends. She was alone a great deal, except for the child. And one night... I was at my desk working over some papers when... She came into the room with a child in her arms. She spoke to me. I don't remember what she said, but I remember that she spoke to me. I had every intention of answering her. But I didn't want to be bothered at that precise moment. Half a minute later, I turned around and she wasn't there. She had jumped from the terrace. She had jumped from the terrace with with the child in her arms. Good Lord. Do you think it's possible... I know how far-fetched it sounds, but... Is it possible that the little boy Ellen told us she had to look after was the ghost of your son? I don't know what else to think. Do you? Tell me something. What nationality was your wife? My wife is French. It all begins to fit together. Doesn't it? When you stop and think about it. When you stop and think about it. You don't want to stop and think about it? That such things don't bear thinking about? All right. Don't stop. Go right on doing the things you've always done. Waking in the morning, putting in the hours until it's time to go to sleep again. Don't, for an instant of your busy day, think about such things. But that won't make the things go away. Now, will it? That was a quiet little ghost story, wasn't it? Just as I said it would be. Personally, I prefer ghost stories to be quiet. For ghosts, Generally speaking, having no physical equipment, tend to be quiet. But like so many living people who are quiet, ghosts are also tenacious and persistent. And they are everywhere. Our cast included Rosemary Murphy, Arnold Moss, Mason Adams, Corrine Orr, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Preceding Mystery Theater program was furnished by the CBS Radio Network. Listen now to this scene from tomorrow night's offering on the WOR Mystery Theater. I'm going to kill myself. Well, that's one way to... You're what? I'm going to kill myself, but it won't be suicide. You're going to kill yourself, but it won't be suicide. That's right, Murray. And my wife will receive $50,000 in insurance money. Now I know you're crazy. I'm serious, Murray. Well, you can go ahead and kill yourself, but your wife isn't going to get any 50 grand. You're not even married. That's right, Murray. Don't you see now why it's so perfect? Dress to Kill stars Robert Morse and will be heard tomorrow night on the WOR Mystery Theater, following Fulton Lewis at 7 o'clock. Your dial is set for 15 minutes of late news with John Scott reporting at 8 o'clock.